All That Lies Between with Peter and Angelina. Oftentimes, back in the monastery bread, when the wine in my glass was as red as the blood of Christ that he bled, I longed for the clear water fed from the wayside stream instead. Let's stop at a cliff high along the riverside and push some leaves around and aside to make a cushion on which we can ride. Here we'll eat lunch and hold each other close. The sun is warm on the skin but not a roast, for the water is trading light breezes with the coast. I'll pull out a loaf of bread first, a bottle of wine, and then the book of verse. What page are we on this day, by the way? It says today that this is heaven on earth in every way. That's our page. Let us be intimately close without words and rest in each other's arms afterwards. Ah, the fainting embers of yesterday. Off in the distance, I see one last wisp of smoke upon the horizon. That's all that's left of the monastical village. All things arise and then all things go where they went, for life is transitory, volatile, and impermanent. Flow and change are basic features of life. In fact, they are life. Pain begins when one resists the flow that is inherent in the pattern of our changing row. Yes. Empires come and go, sultan after sultan rises to the throne, but after they're gone and briefly known, the summer still blooms with the rose, and still the water in the river flows. It is all that lies between energy's dispersion from the beginning to the end, it seems. It is a beauty and a brilliance flashing up in its destructance, for everything isn't here to stay its best. It's merely here to die in its sublimeness. Like slow fires making their brands, it breeds, yet ever consumes and moves on as more it feeds, then spreads forth anew this unpurposed dispersion, an inexorable emergence with little reversion ever becoming of its glorious excursions through the change that patient time restrains and feasting upon the glorious decayed remains in its progressive march through losses for gains. The deepest structure of change is but decay, although it's not the quantity of energy, say, that causes decay, but the quality for its strays. Energy that is localized is potent to affect change, and in the course of causing change, it ranges, spreading and becomes chaotically distributed, losing its quality but never of its quantity rid. The key to all this, as we will see, is that it goes through stages we, and so it doesn't disperse all at once, as might one's paycheck inside of a month. This harnessed decay results not only for civilizations, but for all the events going forth in the world and the universe beyond. It accounts for all discernible change of all that ever gets so rearranged. For the quality of all this energy declines, the universe unwinding as a spring. Chaos may temporarily recede, quality building up for a need, as when cathedrals are built or forms, and when symphonies are performed, but these are but local deceits, born of our own conceits. For deeper in the world of kinds, the spring inescapably unwinds, driving its energy away as all is being driven by decay. The quality of energy meant is of its dispersal's extent. When it is totally precipitate, it destroys, but when its gate is geared through chains of events, it can produce civilization's tenants. Ultimately, energy naturally, spontaneously, and chaotically disperses, causing change irreversibly. 
It is all of the necessitated restraint, for it ever takes time the scene to paint, as such as in the unfolding of a leaf, the endurations for any stepping feet, as of the emergence of consciousness and the paused ends of energy's restlessness, as of the controlled consequence of collapse, rather than one that's wholly precipitous. So now all is known of our here's and now's within this parentheses of the eternal bow, as well as the why and how of it all has come, and of our universe's end, but that others become. Out of energy's dispersion and decay of quality comes the emergence of growth and complexity. Energy goes through its paces, and so it was that I dreamt a lot during the winter moon, when I was wrapped, thought-bound, in a cocoon. Me too. My imagination and memory were king. Now the mind can rest while the senses reign and sing for springs returned and our winter dreams take wing. I had a dream last night which granted that I was living on another planet. I was out walking at night with a child, nigh examining the lights of the night sky, explaining the names of the stars, when suddenly the earth blew up quite afar. Oh, it thoroughly exploded in blazes solar, or perhaps even nuclear. Look, oh look, mon père! Look at the pretty shooting star! Such is the relative importance and worth of the Earth in the scheme of those which burst. How insightful we are becoming trained since reading this book of quatrains. Often times, back in the monastery bread, when the wine in my glass was as red as the blood of Christ that he bled, I longed for the clear water fed from the wayside stream instead. Let's stop at a cliff high along the riverside, and push some leaves around and aside to make a cushion on which we can ride. Here we'll eat lunch and hold each other close. The sun is warm on the skin but not a roast, for the water is trading light breezes with the coast. I'll pull out a loaf of bread first, a bottle of wine, and then the book of verse. What page are we on, this day, by the way? It says, today, that this is heaven on earth in every way. That's our page. Let us be intimately close, without words, and rest in each other's arms afterwards. The fainting embers of yesterday, often in the distance I see one last wisp of smoke upon the horizon. That's all that's left of the monastical village. All things arise, and then all things go where they went, for life is transitory, volatile, and impermanent. Flow and change are basic features of life. In fact, they are life. Pain begins when one resists the flow that is inherent in the pattern of our changing row. Yes. Empires come and go, Sultan after Sultan rises to the throne. But, after they've gone and briefly known, the summer still blooms with the rose, and still the water in the river flows. 
It is all that lies between energy's dispersion, from the beginning to the end, it seems. It is a beauty and a brilliance flashing up in its destructance. For everything isn't here to stay its best, it's merely here to die in its sublimeness. Like slow fires making their brands, it breeds, yet, ever consumes and moves on. As more it feeds, then spreads forth anew, this unpurposed dispersion, an inexorable emergence with little reversion, ever becoming of its glorious excursions through the change that patient time restrains, and feasting upon the glorious decayed remains, in its progressive march through losses for gains. The deepest structure of change is but decay, although, it's not the quantity of energy say that causes decay, but the quality, for its strays. Energy that is localized is potent to effect change, and, in the course of causing change, it ranges, spreading, and becoming chaotically distributed losing its quality but never of its quantity rid. The key to all this, as we will see, is that it goes those stages we, and so it doesn't disperse all at once, as might one's pain side of a month. This harness decay results not only for civilizations, but for all the events going for in the world and the universe beyond, it accounting for all discernible change, of all that ever gets so rearranged, for, the quality of all this energy king declines, the universe unwinding, as a spring. Chaos may temporarily recede, quality building up for a need, as when cathedrals are built, or forms, and when symphonies are performed, but, these are but local deceits, born of our own conceits, for, deeper in the world of kinds the spring inescapably unwinds, driving its energy away, as all is being driven by decay. The quality of energy meant is of its dispersal's extent when it is totally precipitate, it destroys, but when its gate is geared through chains of events it can produce civilization's tenants. Ultimately, energy, naturally, spontaneously, and chaotically disperses, causing change, irreversibly. It is all of the necessitated restraint, for it ever takes time the scene to paint, as such as in the unfolding of a leaf, the endurations for any stepping feet, as of the emergence of consciousness and the paused ends of energy's restlessness, as of the controlled consequence of collapse, rather than one that's wholly precipitous. So, now all is known, of our here's and now's within this parentheses of the eternal bow, as well as the why and how of it all has come, and of our universe's then, but, that others become, out of energy's dispersion and decay of quality, comes the emergence of growth and complexity. Energy goes through its paces, and so it was that I dreamt a lot during the winter moon, when I was wrapped, thought bound, in a cocoon. Me too. My imagination and memory were keen. Now the mind can rest, while the senses reign and sing, for springs return and our winter dreams take wing. I had a dream last night, which granted, I was living on another planet, I was out walking at night with a child. Night? Examining the lights of the night sky, explaining the names of the stars, when, suddenly, the earth blew up, quite a fire, oh, it thoroughly exploded, in blazes solar, or perhaps even nuclear, the child then said to me, clear, look, oh, look, Monday pair, look at the pretty shooting star. Such is the relative importance and worth of the earth in the scheme of those which burst. How insightful we are becoming trained, since reading this book of quatrains.